Hey guys, I am having trouble. So I am, I have my uh, camera mounted at the top here, as you can see, and it is just showing up black on the screen. So I hope you can bear with me while I try and figure this out. And if it's not going to work, then I'm just going to use my freaking webcam to record this whole thing because. I am not in the mood to struggle. I've been struggling for the past half an hour, <laughs> which is not a good start to the morning. But yes, good morning, everybody. And I've got my tea. I have my big cup of, it says coffee, but it's, it's green tea. And I had some fresh oranges, so I'm full of energy and all good to go. Um, let me just see. Wow, there's a couple of you on here. That's so good. Oh, you guys are so nice and so good at making conversation. I love seeing that. Uh, okay, so some of you were early, <laughs> Nanette and Landy. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, okay, everybody was just saying hello. Right, okay, I'm going to try and figure out this whole, this whole computer, ugh, this whole recording issue. Let me see if I can. I tried to restart my computer, I tried all that stuff, but it's just not, it's not working. Now it's saying it's not detecting a device. Jeez. Oh, Okay, I can see it now. I'm getting annoyed. It looks like I might just have to use the webcam. Okay, I'm gonna um, stop streaming for a second and just restart OBS, which is what I'm streaming through, and then see if it works. And if it doesn't, I'm just gonna switch the camera over. Okay, just bear with me. There we go, I think we're good to go. The lighting is sort of okay for you guys. This is the best I can sort of do. I don't want to be too in your face with a webcam. Radio. So we have our owl today. So some of you may have. Um, are any of you going to be doing the live stream with me today or the tutorial with me? I'm 
it's trying to get the other camera sorted. Okay, if the lighting ends up, I can't really get the lighting much better than this, but if this is going to be too hard for you guys to see, then I um, will just post the video feed from my DSLR camera, um, just the live feed, and then we can, we can watch from there. Okay, so I really want to get started now. That was a whole 10 minutes delay for nothing. <laughs> Alex wants to see everything. Of course you can draw, Alex. Um, can't do anything until I get new glasses. Looks good to me. Okay, cool. You guys are good to go. So I'm going to do something a little bit different for the background today. I'm going to use black ink because I want the background to be as dark as possible. And um, we're going to see how that works. So I did say that I think I said I'm going to use pan pastels in the description in the Patreon post. But I am not going to do that. I did that in the last one. But, so I feel like doing something a little more different to see if I can get a darker background than what I did before. But the same concept applies. If you're using pan pastels, you can use that in the background instead to get your black background. Because I don't use black paper. I don't like the feel of black paper um, with the layers of the pencils and the blending of the solvent. It just The black paper just doesn't feel very nice to me. So I prefer not to use it. And also the black paper is like a dull off black color. It's not a very um, very dark black, which is sort of what I want to get. So, um, yes. Okay, so I'll start off by mentioning what materials we're going to be using. And then we're going to pick our color colors using our swatches. And then we are going to start putting it all together. Some of you guys from the U.S. are tuning in as well. How, how are you guys up at 1 or 2 a.m. in the morning? Is that... You guys are night people, aren't you? Well, Daniel will probably be earlier in the day, but at a reasonable hour, I think. Hi, Daniel. Nice to see you on here. <laughs> cool. Okay, so I'm using a bit of black ink, and the ink I'm using is the black ink that I use for my airbrush, so it's just airbrush ink, and that's what I'm going to use in the background, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to outline the owl and put the outline down onto my paper, and then just paint around the outline, so that's all I'm going to do, just a really, really black color, and then off, so... After that, I'll start applying the color to the owl. So to start off with, I'm going to use a graphite stick like this. And I'm using my print, my outline print. And I'm just going to fill it in. This owl's got a lot of really fine feathers around the beak area and everything. So I'm going to use an etching tool on, and apply that to my paper first. So I think a lot of you would have seen me use this technique. I use it a lot. And then that way I can get those real fine little straight feather pieces that I want to get. So it's so fine that it's smaller than the sharpest point of my pencil. So that's why I like using it because I can at least get get it to look really, really small and detailed. Okay. And that's as far as you have to go if you want to transfer an image onto your drawing paper. I'm not going to freehand because we don't have all day. Well, we do, but we don't want to use all day to freehand. Surprisingly not too tired, Alex, it's good. I, I, I went to bed at 10 o'clock and I got up at 2, so I had 4 hours sleep. 
but I had four really good quality hours of sleep so I slept like a rock so I feel good waking up and then um, I had some water and I had three oranges nice oranges that my auntie Mary gave me yesterday um, off her farm and I feel energized and I feel fine so we we're good to go don't worry about me okay so let's go through the, all the tools I'm using so I'm going to be using my swatches so I've got two big swatches like this one is for my Faber-Castell polychromos pencils and the other one is for my Prismacolor pencils and these swatches is a lot of you know they are on patreon to download you can um, download these it's on if you go to the post page and on the left you'll see a favorites so you'll see it right there um, in front of you just pick on the color swatches there's also some blank swatches in there as well for you guys um, if you have other pencils that you want to create swatches for then you just have to write in the middle whatever the color or number is for it and you guys can make swatches from them too using the same um, instruction sheet it's fine just to use different pencils so we're going to use these swatches and it's the big sets of pencils that I'm using this time so I'm using my polychromos 120 set and my prismacolor 150 set of pencils and I really need to get a lot of new pencils because some of them are so small that I can't use them so hopefully we don't come across any of them and we will find the pencils we need otherwise we just have to stick to basics I have small sets so we'll just use as long as we got the, the pencils in the small set we'll make do we can do it oh and the next live stream I promised that I was only going to use the 24 set of prismas and the 24 set of polychromos so that I can show you guys how to do a full tutorial with using the small sets of pencils and you don't have to get the big sets of pencils to still get away with all the colors that you need and a, a good realistic picture so those are the pencils we're using I'm also using my zested solvents I've got it in a little container like this it's turning yellowish because I, I don't clean my brush every time I put it in there so it's going to eventually be a murky color but it still does the trick I've got a brush like this to blend it with the paint the brush that I'm using is actually a makeup brush because I found that I um, I bought a set of a huge set of makeup brushes all the the numbers that you can get of makeup brushes for fifteen dollars on eBay and if I had to buy all those sort of brushes just because it's called a paintbrush at an art shop I would have paid probably two hundred dollars to get that amount of paint brushes in those various sizes so the makeup brushes work fantastic I don't find that the hair comes out or anything it works just the same so I'm happy with that so that's what I'm using you can use whatever you want um, for the smaller details I'm using the number two round uh, jazz art brush so this one is from uh, an art store but really you can use whatever brushes are going to work for you it doesn't have to be anything fancy um, I'm thinking I'm going to use a bit of this masking fluid just on the outside of the, around the outside of my owl to uh, make sure that the ink doesn't go beyond that but and then later down the the I'm going to decide later depending on how well we go with time I might add a little firefly on the top right just to make it pop and have something that's sort of glowing um, next to it and then we got the etching tool so just something with a nice sharp point like that the etching needle or this you can get in a sculpting set uh, so anything with a nice really nice sharp point like that is going to be great for defining all these really tiny feathers around the beak and probably around the eyes as well uh, what other materials are good the sharpener all the basic stuff oh, and the paper that I'm using I'm using the Reeves watercolor paper uh, because I was going to use the Fabriano Artistico but I ran out of the paper I used all my paper in my last workshop so I didn't realize that I needed to get more so I'm just using the Reeves one and I'm using the smooth side of it because 
the other sides just got a little bit more texture than I would like to use. So whatever watercolor paper you're using, as long as it's between 200 GSM and 300 GSM, is going to be fine. You don't have to, to worry about getting real expensive brands or any particular brand. As long as that's the weight of the paper is between 200 and 300 GSM and you get as smooth as possible. And if you find that one side is not as smooth as you like, check the other side. The back side is usually pretty smooth. So that would be the paper that we're using. Alex is asking me why don't I do one color swatch for all my pencils? What do you mean? Just put them all together like... Yeah, I could do. I usually keep my swatches in my pencil sets. So if I'm going to grab one set for some reason, then I've got that swatch there instead of flicking through, through a lot. Plus, I haven't really made swatches for my other sets because it takes time. It takes a lot of time. <laughs> I did swatches for my workshops and that that was just for the 24 pencil sets and it took me about 40 minutes to do one swatch and I needed to do 12. So that wasn't a very fun day but it can be relaxing if you have a movie or something on and you just get on with it. Right, so let's get on with this one. Now I'm going to trace just the outline of the owl, not the inside of it. Actually now I should do that. Okay, so we're going to uh, transfer our owl onto our drawing paper and the way you do that is like I showed you, you color the back end with your graphite, you use your etching tool. I'm going to use a bit of masking tape to make sure that this stays in one position because you don't want your um, image to move around while you're trying to transfer it because then it's not going to stay on there properly. And let's just get that out of the way for now. Right here. So that's on there. I can sort of feel where I want it. I've got masking tape down just on a board. And I, um, let's zoom in for you guys. I really wish the lighting was better. I mean, I have my lights right over my image. And to me, it looks a lot clearer than what I. I think it looks to you, but anyways, if you have it bigger on the screen, it might be a bit better. I wonder if I switch this to... It's probably not much better. Okay, let's not all that so I'm using a little bit of pressure just enough to get the outline out I don't want to go press too hard everywhere I will press pretty firmly around the tiny feathers around the um, nose after I put my outline down so you don't want to press really firmly with the graphite because you don't want the graphite in those etches you want them to stay clear So for those that want to draw on the uh, black paper, I did put an inverted outline out on there for you so that you can use the um, white graphite paper if you want it to transfer your image onto black paper. Okay, so now I'm going to try and find important points that I need to put down. So I will put the image of that up later. Okay. So I didn't print out the copy because 
as Murphy's Law would have it. My printer isn't printing properly. So I'm using my phone as a reference. So there's really not that much detail on this part of the wing. So I'm not going to put too much there. So when you have um, in PicMonkey, I put instructions on uh, Patreon on how to get this outline and how to get a blurred copy of your reference. If anybody saw that, uh, I just did a blog post on my website about it. So I, I initially thought that they were th free features on PicMonkey, but they're not. But PicMonkey is really cheap and it's really worth it if you're going to do something like this a lot. Um, it's Well, I guess it's worth it for me because I use it every week. But it depends on what you want to do. I think I pay like $34 a year to use all the features of PicMonkey. And I use them for a lot of things when I create my thumbnails or, um, you know, just my um, sort of promoting posts that I have on social media. Uh, PicMonkey is really great to use for all that stuff. But like I also said, uh, for those that don't want to do it, I'm happy to do it for you. Um, for any images that we're going to do on Patreon, I'll obviously supply the blurred version and the outlines. Barn owls are such beautiful animals. It is nice to actually be drawing one. Funny, you actually see a lot more detail in the this outline than you do in the in the image. Hey Jody, uh, yes, you don't have to use the solvent on the bottom with the white because you use such a thick layer of the white wax based pencil, it will move around. Um, it's the solvent only does stops it from moving around, or it won't move around when you apply a solvent if your layers are nice and and fine. But because you used a thick layer of white, it will move it around. But uh, in my workshops, I've just been telling them to use the solvent on the top layer, not the bottom layer. So, um, yeah, you don't have to do that for, for all your swatches. Just use the solvent on the top layer and use the white pencil for the bottom layer. Uh, Landy, yes, because you've got... I don't know what camera you have, but the photos that you take are amazing. Did you do a course in photography or are you just um, sort of teaching yourself? Okay, the outline of the eye of the owl is very important because you actually see more in this outline than you do in the um, in the reference because the eyes are so dark, they almost look black. So just take note of your outline if you feel like you need to define shapes a little better in your first few layers, um, if you're getting confused with what you're actually seeing in your reference, use your outline to just check those finer details. So 
So now I'm just putting a few pieces here to make sure that I'm just following the right direction. So the center, the hairs are so almost crisscrossing in the center. They're coming towards each other. I say hairs, but I mean feathers. Oh, that's great, Lundy. I think you just naturally have it in you. That's why you have the the drive to go ahead and do it. It's the same with art. You must want to do it or have some sort of um, patience and motivation and, and you'll do it. Not everybody would enjoy something like this. I don't have patience for photography because I just don't get it right. <laughs> or, not so much don't get it right. Oh, excuse me, but I don't have the patience to wait for animals or, you know, wait for them to be in a position or wait to find them or anything, especially with birds. You'd have to be so patient with birds. Okay, I think I'm... I'm happy with that outline. It's very basic. It doesn't help I go overboard with my outlines, but because I'm going to do a base layer using and make the base layer really blurry, so I'm going to make it the same as the blurry reference, you're not going to see those outlines as much. So I got a lot of really good feedback um, on using the blurry image as your first initial reference to get your foundation down on your drawing because it's the blurry image helps stop your eye from looking at the details and it stops you from getting confused so it's it's a really great tool to use okay so what i'm going to do and this is optional for you guys but i'm using a molotov um, masking liquid it's a pen and it's blue and I'm just going to outline the area that I want to be careful of with my um, black ink And then, I think maybe I want to add a, a firefly. I wonder if it might be best for me to add it now. No, if I'm going to add a firefly, that'll go fine over the top of the black ink, I think. Sorry, I'm, I'm talking to myself a little more now. Radio, so I'm going to let that dry. should dry pretty quickly. Yeah, you have to have a lot of patience. But yeah, I'm the same. Like, I, I don't even know how to use Photoshop. I know Photoshop would be such a handy thing to learn. But I have I don't have the patience for learning how to use all the tools and everything. And I certainly don't want to pay $300 a year just to have Photoshop. I'd rather pay 30 bucks a year so I can have Sketchbook Pro and $30 a year so I can have PicMonkey and those are the only two editing things I use and they work like a dream no problems for me yeah the the masking pen it actually works really good 
And you've got so much more control compared to the liquid and a brush because masking fluid is horrible to use um, with a brush. Okay. So now I'm using and take I'm gonna take a bit of this black ink and I just have a container here. So I'm gonna pour some of it in there. Carefully. Oh wow, Nandi, that's amazing. You don't even use Photoshop when you get such good shots. And I'm going to use, no, I just have any old brush. Um, and I'm just going to apply the black. If you're going to do this, you obviously want to tape down your paper really nicely. Because it probably will warp a little first before it, it dries flat again. Jody, I totally get what you're saying. The simpler something is, the better, in my opinion. But, I mean, if you're going to do something as a full-time job, and something like Photoshop is going to be something you'd use every day, then obviously it's worth learning. But if you can get away with not using it, then why not? So I think, I don't know if I didn't shake my black properly or something. But it's drying grey. So maybe I just need to shake it a little bit better. Sorry, I hope that it's not too noisy. Right. Let's try this again. Hey Alex, I'm using, instead of using the black pan pastel, which you could use in the same way for those that want to use it, I am using black ink. Um, because I just, I want it to be really, really black. Or oh, I'm hoping that it'll be really black, but it seems to be drying like a grey colour. And then I'm also going to go... into the shoulder a little a 
because there's quite a shadow okay so I might just let that dry a little more before I apply any more and if it doesn't work then we'll just apply pen pastels over the top we'll see this is still also experimenting gray it's going. I mean, it's the same black that I use on the Muhammad Ali. And that's very black. Well, no, actually it's not. For those who are wondering, I still haven't finished the Muhammad Ali. That's what it looks like at the moment. But it'll eventually get there. done so I still I still have a fair bit to go I've done about a third of the crowd in detail now I need to add detail to the rest of the crowd and um, the referee and Muhammad is done I just have to do the ring and the guy that's knocked out I actually don't know what his name is I don't know who he is See, this is drying very light for my liking it may look dark from what you guys can see but from what I can see it's, it's going pretty grey not black like I would like and might not have taped it tight enough so hopefully it goes back okay I'm gonna give it another go one more go and if it's not dark enough we'll come in with a pan pastel I'm going to put my headphones in I'm just listening to, to some nice music which I can't let you guys listen to because of copyright nonsense that's a good question Lundy I do so Landy's asking, do I have any of my very first drawings that I did leading up to when I started doing commissions? I do. I'll make a little note and I will put them on Patreon so you guys can see. Um, uh, old 
drawings. Before commissions, post to Patreon. Okay, it's starting to dry a little darker, which is good. problem is going to be to get it to look smooth instead of streaky. Yeah, Landy, you've got to be really patient. I mean, when I started three years ago, I pretty much, because I wasn't working, I was out of a job, that's how I got started with drawing, and then I, um, I was drawing for hours and hours already from like day one, so the more time you can spend on it, the better you get, so practice makes perfect, and that works the same in anything that you do, but uh, you'll get there. You haven't had the opportunity to really spend that much time on it, so you can't be hard on yourself. Okay. It's almost dry. I really hope it goes flat. Oh no! I just noticed that you guys, my video screen has paused, it's stuck. Freaking hell. So th it's not working. I have my hand waving around all over the paper and you guys can't see it. So I'm going to pause the stream for a second and you, you guys won't be able to see me, which is fine, you don't need to. And I'm just going to use my webcam to record. Okay, so just bear with me for a second while I try and figure that out. Okay, this is just going to have to do the trick. I hope that's okay guys, I'm just going to have to use my um, webcam to do this because my camera is just worthless piece of crap. 
So I've got this. I've got the Panasonic um, HD. So th this is supposed to be a really good camera, and it's just it's been giving me so many hassles. But to be fair, I don't think it's so much the camera as what it is my laptop. So, anyways, let me flip the screen. There we go. So that background is looking quite nice, although it didn't flatten out. So I'm hoping that it will. I want to add a little bit more to the top and the left over here because I can see some streaks. And then we should be good to go to start the coloring process. Easy peasy stuff, Jody. <laughs> yeah, the blank ink is nice. It is easy. Just make sure that you don't do what I did and you really tape down your paper really firmly. You probably want to use um, a blue masking tape like this or a green one uh, instead of the white one, which would adhere to it better. And it'd be, it would, I should have just used the blue. And I sort of knew it as well, but I don't like the color of that tape. <laughs> which is a silly reason to not use it, but anyways, maybe it will flatten out, we'll have to see. But anyways, what we can do while that is drying properly, um, is we can find our colors. So using our swatches, I'm gonna be comparing to my phone, my reference on my phone, so I just have it like that. And I will tell you guys which colors I'm using throughout the whole process. Yeah, Alex, that's totally up to you. I am quite happy with having a pure black background only because I can see how it's working with the reference that I got. I'm happy for it to sort of really fade into the back, the black of the background. What I'm going to do later is I want to add a little firefly over here which is going to have a nice green and yellow glow. And then that's going to add a little bit more to the background instead of it just being so flat. Nanette, yeah, I'm sort of thinking that I do prefer the ink uh, over the pan pastels because for one, it's not as messy and it's not going to wipe off on your hand as you draw. And um, it's darker, it's definitely darker. Okay, so looking at my reference, the eyes... I wouldn't make the eyes complete black, Alex, if you want to know that. I would always add like an indigo blue or a, a very dark deep red in with the black. 
um, especially because the owl is going to be warmer colours, so I'll probably use more of the reddish tones for the warmer colours, um, for the black. Yeah, and the reason I use black like this is because I do want it to cover the whole background, so it depends on what you want to use. Okay, so I'm going to start off with um, my Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils and I am going to get pretty much all my brown ranges. So let me get my brown pencils. So... Van Dyke Brown, which is number 176. Nougat. Which is number 178. Sorry, a lot of my pencils are getting pretty small. Burnt Sienna. Burnt Sienna is number 283. We got some really nice warm tones. So brown ochre and raw umber. So brown ochre is number 182, raw umber is number 180, um, light yellow ochre, Number 183. Yeah, Alex, if you think that the black is covering everything, even though you're mixing other colors in there, um, it does still make a difference. You may not see it with your naked eye straight away, but it does create a balance with the rest of your image. So um, don't feel deterred from mixing colors into your black if you feel like the black just overpowers it. Those, the hints of those colors will still remain in there. So we got a, ni a lot of nice warm greys. So we'll use warm grey 5. Which is number 274. We'll use... So we won't use much white, so for the real light areas in the owl, we'll use a fair bit of the, the warm greys. So warm grey 2, warm grey 1, and I'm going to stick to all the warm colours, I'm not going to use the cold greys. have we got in here? We've got some nice red tones. Ooh. The Yes, 
also the Caput Mortu number 169 the Caput Mortu Violet number 263 Cinnamon as well, number one eighty nine. Beautiful. So, cinnamon and flesh we'll use in the beak with those other red colors. Where is flesh? So light flesh number one thirty two. Um, the eyes I'm going to use black and indigo blue. So I'll use my black, but I'll use the indigo blue from the Prismacolor set because my little indigo blue is so tiny. I'm going to use Indian red around the eyes. I'm starting to yawn. There's no good. Indian red number 192. So I'm, I'm going to leave it at that for this swatch because we still have to pick from my Prisma colors. And then if I feel I need to find more, then you could always do that later. Okay. Okay, and now I'm going to use the indigo blue from my Prisma color set, which is PC901. Hey, Jody, um, I do still use my luminance on occasion. I love those pencils, and I almost I like them so much that I don't want to use them because they, they are so expensive and it's not easy to... Oh, actually, you can start getting the individual ones. So I might start using the luminance on occasion. I need to make swatches for them. But they are wonderful pencils. And if I had to pick between them and Prismas, I would pick them instead of the Prismas. The only thing I like more about the Prismas is the wider range of colors that you get. Because... The biggest set of the Luminance pencils is 74 or 76 and Prismacolor has got 150. So you just get so much more, so many more pencils. Plus you pay, I pay like $1.20 for a Prismacolor pencil or $1.80 and for Luminance pencil I pay like $3.80. And I would also love the Pablo pencils but yes you are right they are quite the investment. <laughs> And it's not just about getting the pencils for me. I have to pay a fortune in shipping them over to me as well. Okay, what am I doing? I'm picking Prismacolor pencils. So now I'm going to use my Prismacolor swatches. And go through the same thing. So I've got some really nice warm 
Prismacolor Pencil Tone. So number 941. I really need to get some new pencils. I'm not sure what 941 color is because it's too small for me to see. But yeah, it's number 941. Um, number 1082, which is chocolate. PC 1082. Oh, I really, really like these warm tones. 943 which is burnt ochre which I sharpened on the wrong end so I won't see the number later on uh, 944 okay so our gray colors Use the 30% French Grey PC1070. Wait, where's that one? Yep, 1070. The 20% Cool Grey, PC1060. The 20% French Grey. So I'm going to use my light warm grey tones for the white areas or the, the lightest areas. There's some real nice warm tones, 1074. Seven six <laughs> Where are you? Okay, I don't I can't find 1076 I either I'm either not seeing it or I don't have it anymore. We'll just use 1056 70% French grey or warm grey, 70% warm grey. Um okay. And then the warmer tones. Around the eyes. 
So I'm sure you guys can see that the beginning process of a drawing, you know, just the beginning steps in finding your colors and everything can take a little bit of time. But once you got it and you start drawing, then, then it, it's all good. So 1080, is that you? Yep, 1080 is beige sienna. Got those okay so and then the own I always use my Prismacolor white because it's wax based I don't use the oil based wax white because it's too translucent okay so that's my palette for the moment so I'm going to actually Emptied one of these trays and I'll make it my my palette. And then, if you really want to make it easy. You can arrange, arrange both your prismas and your um, polys together. So that you can see them a little easier. It's also going to give you an overview look of your whole palette to see if you need to add more of anything else. Oh, how cool is that? We picked the right, just the right amount of pencils to fit in the palette okay there we go um, <laughs> yeah the process it is quite calming because in you're slowly getting into the process of drawing and then it doesn't seem so overwhelming. Okay, let's start drawing the owl. So we're going to use our blurred version. And if you look at your blurred version, let me put the image up here. It is so blurred that you really can't see much details. So let me... Um, put that to the screen so if you look at that you can't see any details at all but you can see quite a few colors and if you can get that down as your base layer without worrying about the details it's going to make the detailing process so much easier for you so I'm going to look the eyes look completely black and that's fine because we'll probably fill them in black but add some of the red tones and that in the black as well and the beauty about if you do your base colors like this um, when you add your detailing you'll probably use your um, wax based pencils to add a lot of the details because that is going to be the only pencil that would layer light over dark so that's just something to consider but I am going to, actually before I start this, I'm going to etch my drawing paper first and etch in all those um, details of fur around the eyes and uh, of feathers around the eyes and on top of the nose area here. And then um, that is going to make, make the detailing process at least stand out 
toward the end so you can see those tiny little feathers and then um, the detailed one you can see it it just makes it so much easier if you have the you have the blurred version and you have that as your base color and then you add those details over the top it's it's just a, a much better process to use without being too intimidating okay so like i said before i start that i'm going to pay attention to my detailed reference and i'm going to use my etching tool and i'm going to etch the feathers and everything in on top of the snout now I'm, i don't know how i'm gonna get i'd like to get my camera a bit closer to show you that but i don't know if i can can zoom in but it's going to affect the quality I think. Hopefully not too much. You can't even see my outline so I don't know. You won't be able to see what I'm doing now but what I, I'm doing is I'm taking my detailed reference and paying attention to all these fine little feathers on top of the beak and around the eyes and I'm going to etch that into my paper. So I'm literally scratching out the texture of those feathers using my etching tool. And then, so the reason my owl is so small actually is so that I can get through this in one tutorial. Um, well, hopefully, hopefully one. It might even be a bit more. But this eye would be beautiful if it was nice and big. But that would be too time consuming for a live stream. So I'm, I'm sorry that you guys won't be able to see what I'm doing right now, but you will see it when I start adding color over the top. Nanette, I'm pressing hard enough for me to see it. So if I hold my face at an angle, I can see the scratches in the paper, but not near hard enough that it would actually go through the um, paper. But definitely hard enough that you can still see it with the naked eye if you look in the right angle so if you hold your hand over your work like this the shadows created should be able to show you your etching your edge lines um, but yeah. if I show you on here so if I had to 
stitch a few lines and then colour it in. You're going to see that texture come out. Sort of. So and it's a nice fine texture which is exactly what we want. We want it to be really, really thin. And there's lots of, because it's feathers and not fur, there's lots of pieces that are going in various directions. So you, you want to sort of pay attention to, to which direction they're going in. And I would encourage you to really spend your time doing this. It's, it's very worth um, taking your time and getting in all those textures because it's just going to really add to the realism in the end. So for those of you just watching the live stream, I can imagine that this can get quite boring. Um, but if you're doing it with me, it'll definitely be a little more fun because then you're going at the same pace. But um, once the stream's over, at least those that are just watching can fast forward or skip it. I don't want to bore you to death, that's not the idea. Oh, I still have masking tape on here, I totally forgot about it. Thank you. 
don't put such a light layer on it. Um, that's not that easy to. get it off I'm scratching gently because I don't actually want to indent my paper. Oh, that's better. Just rub it off. It's been here forever, otherwise. Okay. A lot of, if you look closely at the feathers, a lot of it almost looks like cross hatching. So you could use that as a pattern. Oh, thanks, Stephanie. I might do that next time.
thought I was actually going to struggle being up this early. But it's actually quite nice and not too bad. I guess it all depends on what sort of sleep you have before the time. I did have a good sleep, so I guess that makes a difference. I'm really glad the stream is working out for you guys because there's actually more of you on this stream than there is on my US stream. And a few of you have been supporters on my Patreon page for a very long time so it's so nice to be able to do this for you guys as well. Because the time difference really is makes it hard, doesn't it? If you look really carefully under the beak of the owl, it looks like it's got whiskers as well. Yeah, if any of you don't want to pay for this photo on iStock, just let me know. I think it's really good to have streams like this in real time because it really gives you a good perspective of how long it really takes. And then, yeah, it is something that it's, it's easier to follow. So I think I would have liked to, if I had learned how to draw, I would have loved to have followed videos in real time like this learning. And... Um, then you almost also feel like you you have company <laughs> I don't know you're watching someone you're listening to them and you're learning from them and it just in real time it's, it makes such a difference because I don't know I learn better that way so I'm assuming a, a few others would as well And I mean, it's a video, so you could always just fast forward after the live stream, that is. So why not make it as slow as possible, because you can always make it as fast as you want later. But you can't make it slow from a fast video. <laughs> yeah time lapse is a bit more difficult to learn and also this way you guys get to see if I make mistakes and how I fix those mistakes because I do I do make a lot of mistakes so I think it's worthwhile for you guys to see that as well Thanks, Stephanie. 
But yeah, even if you can't draw during the live stream, you could always do it later because they all the videos will stay there. And also, and I realize that I'm I'm sort of teaching this, but no, by no means am I. <laughs> A qualified teacher or anything like that so I do make a lot of mistakes but I think it's really good and because I haven't been doing it for that long I've been doing it for three years um, so I am bound to make mistakes and I'm happy to do so we're all human it's normal I think these etch marks are going to look so good. I know I'm taking my time with it, but it is going to make a difference. I'm not taking my time, but I'm, I'm spending the time. Thanks guys, you're awesome. <laughs> okay. I'm struggling to see my own, my own lines. My poor dogs, when I've when my alarm went off this morning, they um, they were like, what's, what's going on? Because my boyfriend's on night shift, so the dogs sleep with me on the bed. And um, they were so confused because I was getting up so early. And they weren't sure if they were supposed to get up too. <laughs> so I had to go tuck them in again. I'm spoiled girls. Marie, I, I totally agree with you. They are really great instructors on Patreon and um, yeah, I find that they're pretty thorough as well. And like Patreon is rewarding for the creators as well. So they're going to put every effort in there um, because it's an income stream. It's important to them. So they, they're really going to do their very best to make it as good as they can. And because they're also creating content that they love, they, they're doing things that they enjoy, so it sort of makes the process a lot easier. I mean, anybody would dream to be able to do what they love every day instead of working behind a desk or doing labor work all the time. Oh, beautiful Persian cat. Um, when I was in South Africa, I had a chocolate point Siamese cat, and his name was Top Deck. I'd love to have a cat as well, but 
there's just so many cats around here that um, they're becoming a, a problem and I'd be too scared that my cat would wander out and get caught in a trap or something. So I'd just rather not risk having one. It's too hard to keep them inside and secluded. Especially because my dogs can just go in and out. And the doggy door is so big. Plus, I'm not sure how my dogs would feel about having a cat. <laughs> Alex, that's so cute. Cats really know how to demand your attention, don't they? <laughs> I love their attitude. drawn someone's cat yet I have I've been commissioned to draw so many dogs but never a cat I've drawn wild cats but yeah it's probably something I'm gonna have to do um, next year I was gonna do another Udemy course this year but things have just gotten so busy with the workshops and that that I haven't been able to but um, the plan for the next Udemy course is to uh, draw domestic animals so it's literally a breakdown of how to draw snouts and how to draw eyes and how to draw different kinds of fur and it's a breakdown of every body part for a cat a dog a horse and a parrot um, and the whole idea about that udemy course is so that people can go through the course and then start doing their own commissions so, um, yeah, so that's <laughs> probably the next time I'll be drawing a cat. Oh, my Jean, that's so cool. so cute oh, thanks Stephanie yeah that the um, the leopard I just did with the black background but it was the lion and the lion cub that I did with like a cloudy green background and yeah that one a lot of people enjoy it. It's, it's the biggest drawing I've ever done, so I guess that's why it's such a standout piece. But yeah, I'm, I wouldn't likely step into doing such a big drawing again anytime soon. I'm finding it hard enough to get the Muhammad Ali done. Because you guys see how long it takes such a small drawing. So doing such big ones is something that you do every once in a while, not often. Alex. Yeah, Honey was the cutest puppy drawing I've ever done. It's called Adorable Guilt. <laughs> I still have to draw one of Taylor, her sister. 
I've got a really cute photo for her as well. But yeah, just not enough hours in the day or days in the year. The older you get, the faster time goes by as well. almost two hours into this well we did have some trouble so we didn't really spend two hours on this yet so. the sun is gonna rise oh the sun only rises at 10 to 7 so there's a little while still So it's 10 to 5 in the morning now. So it's going to be beautiful watching the sun. Well, I won't be. So the center of the top of the beak, it's like all those pieces of feathers are, go towards each other. And they almost look like they're slightly cross-hatched. So you can use a cross-hatching pattern to, to do that. So the paper I'm using is 300 GSM, so it just feels like a nice thick cardboard. So this is really great for etching, because there's no way that I'll go through the paper. Jamie it is Jamie or Marie you guys make it hard for me when you don't use the same YouTube names Yeah, I thought so. So just to recap, Jamie, if you want, all I've done is I've used black ink for the background instead of pan pastels because I wanted something that was going to be a little darker and quicker to apply. And now I'm using the etching tool to um, scratch out those nice fine little feathers, um, after which we're going to use our blurry reference image to apply the base 
colors or the foundation of the drawing. So I think I did etching lines like this for on a page double the size about for the lion's face. Oh. Not again. You can do that again. <laughs> Okay. Okay, I've got those really fine feathers etched in and now we can finally start adding some color. <laughs> yes, Jamie, you have. Okay. I'm going to use a little bit more of that black ink. Just to cover this part of the owl. Because this section is quite dark. So I'm going to apply these blurry layers now. If you want to have a better look at this, then it is on as an attachment on the Patreon post. So just download it onto your screen and maybe have it next to the drawing. Um, so it will be easier for you to look at this on your own screen separate from it, um, instead of as a tiny piece on the top corner of this screen. So uh, just something to to think about. So. I am going to start adding those colors that I can see. So I'm looking at my phone like this. And that's roughly the size that I've got. That's more like that. That's about the size of my owl's head. So that's what I want to apply now. So when you have the size roughly the same um, right next to your drawing, it does sort of make it easier because then you don't tend to draw things bigger or smaller than what they are. Uh, 
Yeah, thanks, Marie. I noticed that. <laughs> was yours like cutie pie or something before? I can't remember what it is. Or boo or something. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to use my black pencil. And... Like I said, don't worry about details yet. So I'm going to fill in the eyes with a black. So the black, I always use my um, Faber-Castell Polychromos black. Uh, not so much my Prismacolor one, but I always use my Prismacolor white. So those are two that I just prefer the one brand. So black I like in the Polychromos and white I like in the Prismacolor. If you get some of these shapes wrong, or if you you know get some of the shadows a little more over, it's not going to matter because these are your base colors. These are going to be fixed with your details as you add them later. So don't be afraid. Don't think about what might be there later on with the details. Just think about the blurry version you're looking at and only focus on, on that. The details will come later. <laughs> oh, it's funny, Jamie. So I'm using a very light hand. I, I very rarely use pressure. Build up your layers. So I'm still using the black at the moment. But I'll be mixing other colors in with it so it's not going to look so flat. Oh, I need to remember to record with my... DSLR. Okay. Now I'm going to use the um, Mortoon Violet in over the black I just put down
gonna look weird before it starts looking good. Now we want the um, the owl to fade into the black gradually, like it is in the reference. So a few people have trouble with that, and they don't go dark enough. I find that's the trouble everyone has is they don't go quite dark enough. So we're gonna already get that down in our base colors. So there's a nice highlight over here on the wing and the rest is going to get pretty dark That's so funny, Daniel. That's that's cool. It's cool that you can get away with doing that. <laughs> the last day stop I had, so I was working for an engineering company and um, I was doing procurement and everything for them. And they had such strict um, settings on any website that you go to that you you pretty much couldn't go anyway which is very frustrating okay now using the black I'm gonna um, bring the wings in so I'm using the side of my black pencil And just covering the surface of the wing.
edges over here are going to gradually come to areas that have more light. It'd be funny, Daniel, if you were um, on a conference call and you asked them an art question. Okay, I'm going to use a dark brown, so I didn't pick this out earlier, but um, I want to add the brown over the black, so this is PC946. So, and I'm also going to bring that over to the side of the head.
So, um, I've been seeing on Facebook and stuff that there's going to be a big eclipse in the US next week. Next week or this week? What's today's date? The 17th. So, in a few days. The 21st? Four days? But yeah, we won't see anything from here, which it would have been pretty great if we could have. I'm going to use my raw umber number 180. Bring out some of those warmer tones. cool Jamie you must make sure that you post um, your progress pictures oh wow Marjane I've, I've heard a lot of people are really making a big effort to see the um, eclipse It'll be pretty epic, I think. And, like, um, my boyfriend and I, we recently had our six-year anniversary, and he bought me a massive, really amazing telescope. And um, it's... Oh, you can see every crater on the moon so clearly. It is amazing. So I have yet to... I bought some books to learn a little bit more about astronomy so that I can sort of find my way around the southern sky um, I made the mistake that the first two books that I bought were for the northern hemisphere not the southern hemisphere so I had to go hunt down some other books that were relevant to what I could see here in Australia <laughs> but um yeah it would be so cool to see you to see it Mm-hmm. 
So I'm trying to figure out, I got a, a mount for my phone and a telescope and apparently there's a way that you can mount it over the lens and then take a photo. So I want to, next time I got a clear shot of the moon, it's been so cloudy and the weather's been so bad and so cold here lately that um, there hasn't been a good night to go out. But I want to go out and see if I can get a good photo of um, the moon. So that would be pretty great. Hopefully I can. So now I'm going to use the 70% warm grey PC1056. Jamie, what app is that? Because I, I, I thought I found one that does that, but when I point it at the sky, it, it doesn't tell me the right thing. Because I want to know what constellations I'm looking at. Um, but when I point it at the sky, it's just... It moves around, but it's not showing me the same stars that I'm looking at. Jody, the temperature right now is 6 degrees Celsius. I'm not sure what that is in Fahrenheit. But yeah, it's winter here. We're the opposite of you guys. And winter in Melbourne is freaking cold. But I don't think... We can't really compare it to um, the US. Because it doesn't snow here. It doesn't get that cold. Although... It, it only takes about a two hour drive for you to get to snow. Yeah, I know, it's a pretty epic gift, isn't it, Landy? <laughs> Okay, Jamie says star map and star tracker. Now uh, look, I got this really cool glow in the dark star map for the southern hemisphere um, to to test out. But like I said, I need a clear night where I could really see the stars and then I can take that map out there and have a good look. Jamie, I'm about five hours north of Melbourne, but yeah, same time zone and everything, and I, 
I know that Melbourne is, is really, really cold, so I'm guessing it's the same sort of temperature here as well. And I'm going to use 20% French Grey, PC1069. Oh yeah, Jamie, I forget that you're in Melbourne. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you probably know, I live in Leeton, so I'm about an hour and a half north of Wagga Wagga. I've got um, someone uh, actually driving through from Melbourne to join in one of my workshops in September. <laughs> so that's pretty amazing. Okay, it's getting there.
Now I'm going to use some of the Beige Sienna PC1080. of the flesh on the beak and then okay so now I'm going to show you how to blend this with your solvent but do not we're not going to use our brush because we don't want the solvent to go into the etched lines so we need to be super careful so I'm going to use a piece of tissue and I'm going to dip the very tip in solvent So there's a little bit on there, you probably can't see it. And I'm gonna first blend in the black area because I'm not too worried if that goes into the, you know, the texture of the paper. We're not too worried about the color going in there. So this is how we'll get the excess sort of off. And I'm going to use the back of that piece because there's not so much on there. And I'm going to dab it gently on the top of my, my etched lines. So I want the color to come out pigmented, but I don't want my edge lines to disappear. So you're lightly brushing the surface of the paper to bring out that pigment. But you still want to keep the, the edge lines. So be, be very, very gentle. And the tissue paper that you're using is almost dry. Like there's not enough liquid in there to really fall into the cracks of the paper. You're just brushing that onto the surface of the paper. And the eyes will do with the brush. Okay, and now I'm going to use a brush to do the eyes. Uh, I'm going to use 
this is my number two Jassard brush. And around the edges of the eye, I'm just going to dab the brush. On top of the very surface. So my brush is almost dry to the touch. There's not much solvent on there. Because I still want to leave the texture showing. I don't want to lose my etched lines. Beautiful. <laughs> Jamie, that's funny. Landy, you, you, I think you need to sort of think of art as a form of meditation, not something that um, is stressful. So you need to maybe draw some patterns, um, you know, draw an outline of a flower and draw some patterns in there like a mandala. Do things like that because that's very meditative and it's good for your soul. And if you can just do... and. If you do that for 10 minutes a day, it, it would make such a big difference in your life already. Um, you don't have to spend hours. I think, I know that you like this sort of thing and you want to get involved in this sort of thing, but I think you need to be simple. You need to keep it simple if you find that you don't have the time for this because otherwise you're going to sit and be busy with one piece for a lifetime and feel like it's never going to end and then it's going to become something that's not as fun anymore so i think you need to keep it a little more simple where you can do something um, at the end of the day get one of those adult coloring in books because there's so many patterns in that in there and then draw an outline of a flower and look for some patterns in those books and fill in those patterns and then color in those patterns and then maybe start there and then you're using it as a a, a short time for yourself that you dedicate for yourself every day and I think that's going to make it a little bit easier for you than approaching something like this Stephanie, it's better to etch before you apply color. Because uh, when you start applying color, a little bit of that color is going to go in your etch line. So it's not going to stay very, very light. It's not going to stay white sort of light. So you're better off doing it first. I do know that it can be difficult and it makes it harder to see. But um, it's definitely worth doing first. Okay, so I'm going to come back in with my black. So I'm still looking at my blurry image. And it is really good to get those base tones down. And then you'll see if you, if you cover your image blurry like this first, it's actually going to be easier for you to put those details down. Because you're using your blurry colors to find where those details are supposed to be located.
Thanks, Marie. Yeah, it's starting to to take shape. Amazing. And you don't really see owls here. You see bats. <laughs> there are bats everywhere over here.
put my chair aside and just stand for a little bit. Thanks for that, Daniel. I'm going to use a bit of the light yellow ochre, number 183, to add those nice yellow warm tones.
then I'm going to use some of this 70% warm grey PC1056 because these areas need to be darker still so it's good to gradually go darker and darker as you need to Joanna. <laughs> yeah, I went to bed at 10 p.m. and woke up at 2 a.m. So I got four decent hours of sleep. It is now... Yes, thanks, Jamie. Oh, great, Daniel. See you soon. Okay, and I need to come in with some more of my pink tones. So I'm going to use the Caput, Caput Motu 169. Marie, I'd actually, I don't have any certain or specific structure to what I do first. I, I just look at my, uh, my blurry reference and sort of just decide which color to go next. But 
I gradually build up my layers and then I go darker and darker as I build up my layers. So, but I don't have any specific sort of rule to it, if that's what you mean. Okay, now I'm going to use the 70% French Grey PC1074. I'm not using sanded paper, Johanna, so I won't be using the powder blender. I only use the powder blender if I'm using sanded paper. This one, I'm just using a 300 um, GSM weight watercolor paper. And then to blend, I'm using solvents. Okay, so I'm going to blend that in again, um, again using the tissue paper. Oh, in general, Joanna, I don't know, I don't use the powder blender first. Um, I, I just layer and then blend with the powder blender and then spray with fixative and layer, blend with powder blender, spray with fixative. So that's what I do. If I'm using the powder blender, I would I would use the textured fixative between layers. So I'm just, I still have a bit of solvent left from my previous layer. So I'm just lightly brushing the surface because I don't want to lose my, my textured lines that I use with the etching tool. So that's why I'm not using a brush to blend with this because if I use a brush, it's just going to cover all those textured lines that I did. Okay, so I'm happy with my blurred version of this. Um, I could make it a fair bit darker, but I will make it darker as I work on the details now. So now I'm going to go to the detailed version and start working in those layers. It's so weird because the colors I see here are the same as the colors I see here, physically looking at both of these, but the colors on the screen of this look very red and pink. But it's not. <laughs> so just make sure you're looking at your own reference. Uh, 
No, that's not confusing, Jana. It's good if you clarify that because you, yeah, you don't want to confuse yourself. Okay, I am going to take a five minute break. I'm quickly going to boil the kettle and I will see you guys just in a few minutes. Okay, so I brought the camera a little bit closer so you can really see how small this actually is. So maybe that'll help you see it a little bit better than what it was before. Reflects on that black, doesn't it? This is better. Okay, so let's start adding. Sorry, a bit more detail. So starting with the eyes, beautiful, beautiful eyes. I'm gonna make sure I have a very sharp black pencil. So I'm using my polychromos black. I'm noticing that my eyes definitely need to be rounder than what they are. Yeah, I'm sorry Jody. My other camera is much better. It's supposed to be a 4K camera. But um it just it doesn't want to keep recording or it doesn't want to keep showing on the screen, so um, I'm gonna need to figure that one out. Yeah, Jaina, sure, go for it. If you have something that you think others might want to draw and it's royalty free, um, then yeah, feel free to post it on the Patreon community page. Whatever you think is going to help. As long as you can give credit to the photographer or if you know that it's a royalty free photo, um, then it's all good.
guys, show photos. Yeah, go for it. I'm happy for you to share. <laughs> If it's your own photo, it's even better. No, go for your life. Post them. So then the real dark outer areas of the eye with the black and now I'm going to use indigo blue to darken up the center. Then I am going to blend that in with my solvent and then use a sharp white wax base pencil.
Sylvan, I'm almost going to lift some of it off. So using the brush and the solvent, I'm just wiping in one area enough to almost lift it off a little to create a little bit of a highlight. So that gives that illusion of that um, sort of glow in the middle of the eyes. So if you just rub enough on one spot, it will lift the color. And if you've rubbed too much, just go over it again with your pencil and just blend it in again. And then use your sharp white wax based pencil and just pop in those real small little little highlights. The highlights in these eyes aren't extremely white so you don't have to use a paint marker or anything. very lightly touching the surface with a white to help enhance that illusion of the glow and that really makes the eyes just look so good and then I'm going to create almost little spots around the eyes just with a white and that's going to give that textured look um, around the eyes which it's got so you'll see what I mean if you look at the reference yeah it just really makes the eyes pop They look beautiful, like they're glowing. Okay. So now I want to work around those really warm tones around the eyes. So I'm making sure I've got nice sharp pencils for this. Because we are in the detailing process now. Uh, I'm using my Kaput Mortum number 169. I don't know if I'm pronouncing them right, but I'm just pronouncing them the way they are put down.
See, this is when it starts to really get fun because now it's starting to to take shape. But you gotta go through the first layers and the first, you know, the process that I went through before it starts getting to the point where it's gonna start looking like something. So it's gonna look terrible before it starts looking good. But that is normal. You gotta be patient through that process because once you are, and you get to this point where things just start looking really nice, then you get a great sense of satisfaction out of your work. Okay, now I'm going to use my chocolate brown PC1082. Is that better or not? I can't tell. That's as good as the quality is going to get, which is such a bummer because I really want you guys to see the detail that's in there. Okay, so using chocolate brown PC 1082. Marie, I'm really not that precise. I just look for patterns and then you just break it down. Break it down layer for layer. And then as you process through those um, layers, you just add more definition. And it just it does become easier the more you do it.
<laughs> also, the idea is not to strive for perfection. Because if you strive for perfection, then you, you're very hard on yourself for getting those perfect details. But if you don't strive for it and you just have fun with it, it actually turns out to be really great. And so it turns out to be a lot better because you're just enjoying the process. And it will naturally just get to where you want it to be. The more fun you have with something, the more successful you are at the outcome of that drawing. It has to be fun. The minute it stops getting fun, you're doing something wrong. Thanks, Marie. Yeah, the owl, the owl is looking a bit better than the fishes. Okay, my boyfriend just got home from night shift, so I'm quickly going to say hello, and then I'll be back.
Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Radio. So I'm still using my chocolate brown and I'm working on those little wavy bits around the head. So these little wavy bits here. That's what I'm working on. I'm really starting to get tired now. <laughs> so I might go for another half an hour or hour and then carry on with the, the stream later. Um, I know that it's you guys will probably be asleep by then. Um, but at least we got to spend... Jeez, we would have got to spend more than five hours together for those in the UK times. I really hope that's alright for you guys. And I might carry on with this a bit later today. Um, but yes, I'll definitely do this for once a month. So every, what did I say, every third Wednesday of the month? No, Tuesday? Every third Wednesday or Tuesday? Tuesday, I think. So I'll do this again. And then I try to make my owl small enough to fit this into just one stream. But... You can never tell how long something's going to take you until you do it. You are so welcome, Lundy. It was nice to have you on here for a while. I know you've been wanting one for a while. So, have a good night's sleep. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to use a bit of the white. I'm just going to lighten up some of these areas again. Because it did go a bit too dark in the middle here.
sorry, I don't mean to bump that all the time. I might actually use a bit of the titanium white from brush and pencil um, to at the end as a touch up to enhance some of the real white um, features or highlights. I'm going to use the 70% warm grey PC1056. And work on some of the, the darker values and details. Yeah, Jamie, the white pencil isn't quite as white as I'd like for the real bright highlights. So the titanium white is by brush and pencil. And... It's a powder and it looks like this. So it's just a little canister like that and then you mix it up with the touch-up texture and then that will um, make a really nice white paste which is archival so it'll, it's really good to apply to your drawing and then you just use a fine brush to apply that white.
and um, if you're going to get that in Australia, then you get it from theartshop.com.au. Uh, they're the only ones I know of that you can buy it, buy it from Australia. I'm going to use my black <laughs> That's funny, Jenny. Okay, no worries. Um, I'm I'm only I'm not gonna stream for that much longer, and then I'll probably come up. I don't know. Start again at eleven, twelve, um, twelve-ish my time, and then finish it off. I can just wake up again real early tomorrow so that I can start at the same time and the same people can be a part of it. I might do that. I'll just wake up early again tomorrow and do the same thing and we can all finish it off together with the same people. Thanks, Stephanie.
Okay guys, that's going to be it from me for today. I'll come back on again tomorrow at the same time. And then I am um, going to, when Vinny wakes up, I'm going to get him to fix my camera and find out what the problem is so that you guys can see this in high definition because I don't like the quality that you're seeing right now. I own a camera that has the amazing quality for you guys to see all the details. So that is the one I need to be using, it's the one I want to be using. So um, for when we wake up, I'll get him to help me sort out the camera and then tomorrow I'll wake up again to start the stream at 3 a.m. So same time for everybody else. And I'll put a post on Patreon to let you guys know. And then we will just, um, yeah, we'll, we'll make it a two-part live stream then. And then tomorrow we'll carry on with uh, part two. That's alright, Marie. I, I don't mind. I, I'll probably go to sleep a little bit earlier this time. And then if I get five hours in, it would be it would be even easier. But I'm really good. I don't struggle sleeping and I sleep very, I have very deep sleeps all the time. So even if I get two hours in, I feel pretty rejuvenated before I start feeling really slack again. And um, I just have water and fresh fruit first thing when I wake up. And I, I, I'll feel fine. I feel fine. So, yeah. I'm going to sleep now. And hopefully I can sort my camera out so that you guys can see the real details that are going on in the face right now. And then um, we can also do the background tomorrow. And hopefully if there's time, we can add in a little firefly. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys tomorrow in part 2.